green versus red. Can't get any more simpler than that. Oh yeah, the intro. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a hot minute now, as I have already reviewed the AMD Fire Pro W5100 over a year ago, and if you saw that video, you would know I thought it was a great budget GPU for the value, and that the relative performance it put out was just great. From the form factor, which I miss single slot car designs, to the low wattage power consumption, it has it all. But this is Team Red. Well, I love what they do, what was Team Green doing at this time? And what sort of professional lower-end workstation cards did they have when this guy was released? This is where the NVIDIA Quadro K2200 comes in. Released only months after the W5100, the K2200 is strikingly similar in a lot of ways. Obviously, they both have 4GB of GDDR5 memory, with a memory bus of 128 bits, a single-slot design, DirectX 12 compatibility, and so on and so forth. But both have their pros and cons, and it is weirdly balanced. For example, our W5100 has 128 more shader units over our K2200, but then the K2200 has better clock speeds, even a boost clock, but then worse memory clocks. If you want to pick apart these cards to see which one is better than the other, you will be going back and forth for a while. Me? Personally? I am more interested to see how well they have aged with driver updates since sometimes that's all it takes to make or break a piece of hardware, especially for GPUs. So let's begin with the W5100, which stopped releasing driver updates back in 2021. That was a little while ago, and I previously had issues trying to find them and install them personally, which led me to finding a driver and having to install it manually the old-fashioned way. I mean, it isn't too unexpected, I suppose, but it is a real kick in the shin if you want the experience to be relatively plug-and-play. Regardless, they work, so all that is left is to swap out the W5100 and see how the K2200 does with this... Uh... Huh. So, I might have gotten a bad K2200. Unfortunate. But I feel like that was just pure RNG. We won't hold that against the GPU, or NVIDIA for that matter. So I ordered a replacement for the exact same price, even with taxes included. And right away, it was way more plug-and-play, finding the drivers was easy, and didn't require any crazy web searching. So, so far the K2200, besides my bad luck with the first one, is looking pretty good. Oh, I should also talk about the price, since it is very important. Like with the W5100, older machines get retired, and people pull these GPUs out of said machines, and they get thrown out onto the market. Both the K2200 and W5100 tend to go for between 40 to 20 bucks. I purchased my W5100 for $25.68, which is a reasonable price to pay, and bought the K2200 for only a measly $26.75. These are both very realistic prices to expect for, for these cards, and if a bunch of old workstations get retired, you can easily get them for these prices when they flood the market. I guess the only thing is this will stop sooner or later, considering these guys were, well, at least over a decade ago at this point. but. Anyways, yeah, pretty competitive so far. All that's next is to test these GPUs out with some Vidya games. But I have a different idea for how we should do this. Instead of trying out the latest titles or the most demanding games as I usually do, let's play games that these video cards might be more intended for nowadays. We will still check out some newer titles with their benchmarking tools, but I want to see how well these GPUs run with less demanding games since that's what these should honestly be used for if you want one. Starting off with the rock-solid indie title, Risk of Rain 2. I gave our first runner up a mix of high settings and left on some fun visual details, since I want to see how well both these cards perform right off the bat. And starting off with the K2200, we have a respectable 50-ish FPS average with room to grow if we lowered a setting or two. Not bad. I'm sure we could improve our 1% lows and even make the max frame rate our average FPS and make this more dailyable. And so then, with the same conditions, how well did the W5100 do? Well, in a similar game environment and whatnot, 
It didn't get as high of a max frame rate, but showed a more promising steady average. While acknowledging this isn't a one-to-one -one representation, we can assume there might be a trade of blows with pros and cons on each side. But obviously, we need more frame data. So while both these cards are doing pretty good thus far, let's move on to another game like Cyberpunk. I mean, Cyberhook. Oops. Yeah, an indie speedrunner. Consistent and high frame rates will be important for this title. So starting once again with the K2200, how did we do? Ooh, not bad. Our 1% lows are fairly high and our average isn't too shabby either. And at 1080p with all our settings maxed out, we can easily lower a few to achieve an extra 10 or 20 if we really want to. But again, how does the W5100 differ? Hmm, well, this could be better, but isn't too far behind. I wonder if this is our drivers being less new, making our chances of matching data to the very least the main culprit or something else altogether. Well, at least for now, things don't seem great for the W5100, even though it is holding up fairly well despite the odds. So let's try another game, something a tad more intense. Foxhole is a very fun MMO, and for what it's worth, can run on lower end hardware, but also likes its powerful PC parts if you give it some leeway. These GPUs are nearly perfect for this game on a budget. Again, starting once more with the K2200 at 1080p medium settings, things look fairly great. I mean, while I didn't capture the most chaos possible, this is certainly playable. And I see no real reason that settings need to be lowered. Nice. And the W5100? Hmm. Uh, eh, I mean, I did grab some more action on this playthrough, but that 0.1% low is a tad concerning. Uh, I wish I had something huge explode on the screen when I was testing the K2200 because then I would imagine the 0.1% low could be similar, but I, I don't know. Perhaps I should take our benchmarks up a notch and take some more definitive data with less random variables getting in the way. I booted up a solid AA indie game title, Wreckfest, and participated in the same race for both cards. As always, our K2200 is our leader here and has a respectable average for a title like this. And overall, even in a demolition derby, would only need a few settings lower to easily grab another 10 to 20 FPS if needed. I switched over to our W5100 and placed first, meaning this GPU is clearly the best. And oh, thanks for watching. Just, just, just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it it did really good. Um, so good, in fact. The frame data was very similar, identical even, and is much more like what I thought it would be in terms of a head-to-head -head race against both these GPUs. At this point, maybe I should just be looking at straight-up benchmarks instead of trying to grab the data myself inefficiently. Okay, well, how about we move on to some more demanding titles then? Let's do Rainbow Six first, since while well, it isn't the most demanding AAA, I feel like someone who would want either of these GPUs might play it. The K2200 for the 22nd time does fine, considering how hard we are pushing it. But for once, finally drops the bag, because the W5100 is pulling ahead here by a decent margin. It isn't a huge gap, but a gap nonetheless. Interesting. Okay, well, let's keep going. Next game. Actually, Cyberpunk this time. Yeah, for real. 720p low is the best we can really do, but hey, at least we can play it, and, well, I mean, it is technically playable, kind of, if you squint. Ugh. But the W5100 should be fairly close to that, right? Probably like a smidge better, if, if anything. Oh, it isn't. This is like double the FPS here. Wow. I legitimately had to check multiple times to see if my settings were changed in between tests, but no, this this was my result. Very interesting. Okay, but maybe this is a fluke. Perhaps Red Dead Redemption 2 will give us the answer we are looking for. Admittedly, this doesn't look great running on the K2200. Like, literally, the game looks terrible. I think I was missing some settings just from the GPU and the options themselves. I, I don't know. I lowered it to its absolute minimums and even tried using FSR, which I turned off because 
it kind of helped, but didn't really affect frame rate. But, uh, yeah, whatever. All that matters is what our big numbers were for the lottery here. Huh. That's an important difference, too, I suppose. Not that you would want to buy these GPUs to play these games on them, per se, but look. I kind of want to say that the W5100 is pulling ahead here, leading the way, and... I mean, outside the couple other games I tested, it does seem like this is the case. But for a sub-$30 GPU, sometimes FPS isn't all that matters. Yep, size can actually make the difference. And I think the W5100 wins again. <laughs> it's a bit shorter, which is what you might want, especially if you have an ITX build for some odd reason, and it all comes down to the numbers of length or for one of those really tiny Lenovo Think Centers where you can technically fit a GPU in one with a little bit of 3D printing and hacksawing. Also, there are technically better peripheral ports on the W5100 since, well, four is better than three. And one of them on the K2200 is DVI, which I think you might still be able to find monitors that have a DVI port. <laughs> but, okay, look. Both these cards are very similar, and despite the W5100 coming out slightly on top here, if I were in a pickle where either one of these GPUs were my only choices, like on a budget, I wouldn't be upset between having to choose one over the other. In the end, it's close, but I can safely say either one is a solid GPU if you want to just game now, whether it be classics or just some indie games or lighter AAAs, as they should be able to run all of them nearly one way or the other. So with that all said and done, Let's just wrap this all up. Really cool GPUs, especially that K2200. I knew it would be worth checking out, especially because of how many of you commenters have mentioned it in the last year or so. Oh, and speaking of something being worth checking out, thanks for watching all the way to the end. I will have the W5100 drivers in the description as usual, and in case the K2200s aren't easy to find in the future, I might put them down there as well. If you like this video, like it. Comment what you think since I always love to hear what you guys think. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Join the Discord. Follow me on Blue Sky. Yada yada yada. And oh, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>